are seven official reads to be led today. And first of all, we would like the first read led on behalf of GHQ Ogley Nahern. Belfast Brigade Ogley Nahern. National Graves Association. Sinn Féin Irish Republican POWs Irish Republican Felons Association The Ronnie McCordy Society. I would now invite all the rest of the flower and the reed bearers to lay their reeds where they feel applicable. from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment and supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign pe born people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right, and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state, and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of welfare and its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to, and hereby claims, the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, 
and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and all of its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious to the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic and the trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour by cowardice, inhuman, inhumanity or a pine. In the supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to for sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny that is, to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the provisional government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, G. H. P. H. Pierce, Eamon Kent, James Connolly, and Joseph Plunkett. A third year as a comrade here. Tis you the privilege to do so. Glacolation Corrie. All right, Nakaska, Horton Shaw, Mulfarsh, Tronona. Tracy and Lakanarak, Nikluishak, Desakahar, Er Ahan Grey, the Agar. Agus and Kamaru, Plaintil Shaw. Agus Malam Gohard, Common Uyana, Nalek Regal, and Lak Kumnahai, Shaw, A Ak Naktiu, and you. Comrades, Easter is about commemoration of our patriot dead. And there is a humbling thought that 40 years ago, when the greatest number of all deaths occurred in the north, 34 volunteers and 11 Fianna of the Belfast Command were killed. We extend solidarity to the families of our patriot dead this Easter. Our hearts are with you all today. But I know that solidarity does not lessen the loss and pain which you carry. Easter is also a celebration of our republicanism, our ideals, vision, where we came from and where we're going. The best aspect of today's commemoration, arguably, is to be found in the large numbers of young republicans who participated today. And I want to especially welcome and congratulate the members of Republican Youth Oiga Fublakta who paraded earlier. They represent republicanism at its best in Belfast. And I urge all young people to join Republican youth. We should be very proud of our Republican youth. Good year, good year, good year. 1972, friends, was a dark year in the political conflict in Belfast and across the north. Thankfully, this city and the six counties are a different place to 40 or even 20 years ago. The engine for that change was this Republican strategy and leadership. Everything has changed. The B-Men, the RUC, UDR, and, demil and militarization are all gone. And these generations of nationalists and republicans don't do second class citizenship or inequality. Sinn Féin is driving an equality agenda through government in the north, in opposition in the south, and across the All-Ireland institutions. Our party is the, is the largest in the north, it's on the right and the south, and republicanism has never been stronger since 1919. Republican strategy is working. It is a roadmap for Irish unity. And that's where some who oppose Sinn Féin get it so wrong. I look into this crowd this afternoon and see veterans of the IRA's campaign, from men and women in their 30s through to others in their 70s and beyond. Men and women, political soldiers, who have committed themselves to achieving a united Ireland by democratic and political programmes, since the IRA leadership declared that the conditions of conflict had been removed. That IRA comrades fought the war to a conclusion. And make no mistake about this, there is no other IRA here in Belfast or anywhere else. And there is no armed struggle to be finished. 
Many of us have been involved in persuading for and helping to take risks for peace and giving consistent political leadership. The product of all that risk taking and leadership are the present day political stability and the irreversible peace that we enjoy. Equality, democratic rights, political partnership and all Ireland institutions enshrined in the Good Friday and all the other agreements are now the basis for continued change across the island. So yes, we have indeed travelled a great distance, but we also know that our journey has to be completed. We have much work to do, and we need the maximum goodwill for and active involvement in continuing to build this strategy within the Republican community. Most Republicans support our strategy, but not all are involved, and others have disengaged. Where political disenchantment, doubt or division exist among Republicans, we all must reach out and address that constructively and sensitively. As our strategy advances, we should constantly seek new ways to inclusively discuss how best to move forward. Some Republicans oppose the peace process by militarist and political means. There's a political imperative on us, comrades, to attempt purposeful engagement with all Republicans, and that includes those who oppose Sinn Féin. Increased dialogue and engagement with the wider Unionist and Protestant community is also essential. And that presents a huge challenge for us. Unionists continue to harbour suspicions about Republicans. And Unionists have been hurt by the war. But so too have Republicans. Republicans, especially here in Belfast, have suffered massively at the hands of the British state and Unionism. And that pain cannot be underestimated, nor should it be devalued. But still we look to the future. W.B. Yeats wrote that too long a sacrifice can make a stone of the heart. Well, my friends, Republicans have endured many sacrifices, but our hearts have never turned to stone. The war may well have changed our lives, but not our humanity. We share this place with the Unionist and Protestant people, and we also share a collective humanity with them. The end to war gave way to peace and stable political institutions, and we're right to be satisfied at our progress, but we have no right to be complacent. We need to keep moving the peace process into new phases and onto new ground. A national reconciliation is integral to our strategic project, because that's the basis from which to persuade for and for each of us to take our responsibility in building a new Ireland. Republican activists are agents for change. For us, that means the status quo is never enough. An Ireland at peace with itself is a prerequisite to achieving an Ireland of equals. So this is a new stage on our roadmap to Irish unity. And it is time to begin to discussing how all hurts can be acknowledged, lessened, and if possible, healed. Part of that will mean attempting to better understand each other and trying to imagine what it might be like to walk in each other's shoes, to identify with and make sense of our different experiences. None of that will be possible without an authentic reconciliation process. And this will require new conversations between Republicans Unionists and the Protestant community. And there's never a right moment for that type of dialogue. However, as we know from our experience and struggle, we may wait indefinitely if we wait on others to engage with new thinking and accept the inevitability of next steps. But our generations of Republicans are confident about the future and how we will go forward because we we in this graveyard are visionaries, we are leaders, and we are the nation builders. We have inherited the proud tradition of Tone, McCracken and Hope. We are absolutely dedicated to breaking the connection with England, but also achieving the unity of Catholic, Protestant and dissenter. Our strategy is long term, and it needs to be always looking ahead. This is another time for Republicans to think long term and imagine new possibilities to benefit future generations. Ninety years ago, in the aftermath of the Civil War, 
nothing was done to reconcile the seismic hurt that was caused. And the result was transgenerational divisions that lasted for too long. Today we can stop history repeating itself by leading on the priority for an inclusive reconciliation process in which all sections of our society listen and engage unconditionally with each other but on the basis of equality and mutual respect. Republicans should listen carefully to the diverse voices from within the wider Unionist and Protestant community. Those voices from within that community which are indeed committed to engagement and making common purpose based upon an acceptance of our shared humanity on this island. They are voices which recognise the importance of taking our peace and political processes to a new future. There are new possibilities to be explored with imagination, generosity, new language and new thinking. Authentic reconciliation needs a process in which dialogue is unconditional, language is humanised and all voices are heard. Republican voices, unionist, loyalist and nationalist. But I want to say this very clearly. Authentic reconciliation is not a one-way street. Political unionism has a responsibility to positively embrace this opportunity and engage with the rest of us. And it should do so now. Republicans and unionists are partners in government. We should also become partners in reconciliation. As Republicans across Ireland today reflect on the proclamation this Easter and the new society that our proclamation envisaged, we should give deep consideration to what more we can do to meaningfully help heal divisions in our country and build national reconciliation. When each of us today remember our patriot dead, we also look forward. And we do so with a strategy to finish the work for which those comrades gave their lives. And that strategy thrives in debate. So we need to keep discussing, friends, how we continue to popularise Republican objectives across the island, strengthen the peace process and create a future which every Irish citizen can celebrate. And we have to relentlessly set out our vision and give the political leadership to ensure that that is accomplished. Sinn Féin's aim is a united Ireland with equality and civil liberties at its core. And we pledge to the families of our patriot dead that we will be successful. We want an Irish Republic based on the proclamation which is in control of its own economic and political affairs, free from the grip of austerity, native Gombinism and the role of foreign banks. We are committed to building an Ireland which takes pride in and cherishes the diversity of all of its citizens, regardless of religion, ethnicity, identity or tradition. National reconciliation is fundamental to that. The Republican struggle, friends, has never been more determined. We are committed, we are energised to see our objectives achieved. And this is an exciting time to be a Republican. There are no limits to what our struggle can do or the potential of our political strength. It's an important time for new members to become involved and to help organise Sinn Féin in every community and neighbourhood. Our party wants your talents, your skills and your energy. Our Republican vision is absolutely inspired by the sacrifice of our patriot dead. But it is also reinforced by our responsibility to the children of the present and future generations. Today, comrades, to conclude, the strategic work of Irish Republicans is to bring about an Ireland at peace with itself and which guarantees equality and social justice for all its people. Akharja, we, we have a strategy for Irish freedom and realising that is the greatest monument that we can build for our patriot dead. Let us go from here today with renewed momentum, with confidence and make that vision our shared reality. As I say, that's the first time Dagnan had spoken here. I'm sure it'll not be the last. It was a very, very inspiring speech.
Hey, Rob. Come on, brother. Let's go again. Folks, that concludes our proceedings for today. Thanks a million for everybody turning up and thanks for staying. Bernamila Mayoko.